Hello, I'm Liz Weir, storyteller in residence with the Armstrong Storytelling Trust. We've been working with Northern Ireland Museums Council on a project called Museums Tell Stories. And during the course of this work, we've been working with Fermanagh County Museum in Enniskillen Castle. And they were telling us about the renovation of the Enniskillen Workhouse. And during that work, they found a concealed shoe. Over generations, shoes have been hidden within buildings. And I have a story that links the workhouse period with the whole idea of concealment. People said it was to ward off evil spirits. But my story comes from a wee bit further away, from Donegal, where there was a family called O'Connor, a father and mother, a little boy called Sean, maybe five years of age, and a baby girl called Kathleen, Katie for short. They lived in a thatch cottage owned by the landlord, but of course, when the famine came, potatoes failed, They couldn't pay the rent. So one morning, very early, the landlord's men came and evicted them from the cottage. The young mother stood there with a babe in her arms, saying, I need to get back to the house. I've left something in the house. No rent, no house. So the whole family were sent to the workhouse, where the men were separated from the women. The children were left. And within a week, baby Katie died of the fever and was buried in a big famine pit with all the other fever victims. The young mother weakened daily. Any blush she had in her cheeks failed and eventually she died, they say, of a broken heart. But her husband made sure she had a Christian burial in the local churchyard, even though he couldn't afford a gravestone. And he took his little boy by the hand and they made the long trek up to Derry, where they boarded a coffin ship for America for a new life, leaving Ireland behind and yet... He told his son stories of Ireland, told him about his baby sister, told him about the home they had there, sang songs, played tunes on the whistle. When they got to Boston, well, they lived in an Irish neighbourhood. The young man got a job working on the tall houses that were being built at that time. His son, Sean, went into the building trade and generation followed generation. The O'Connors did very well until they decided to come back to Ireland to look for the place where their ancestors had left many years before. It was easy enough to find the churchyard, and they arranged for a stone to be put up for the great-great-granny. And then they went looking for the old cottage. All that stood there were four walls, roof had long since caved in. But there was a for sale sign. They said, we're going to buy it. People said, you can't buy that house. Why not? It's our house. It's our family home. No, it's haunted. Nobody can stay in that house for they hear the noise of a baby crying night after night, even walking past it. They said, it's our house. Well, they used their building skills, and soon it was a lovely whitewashed cottage with a straw roof, lovely thatched roof, painted up half door and windows. Their daughter Kate was playing about inside the house, and they had a big, big open fireplace. You know, you could step inside it and look up to the sky. And she'd heard stories as to how... Halfway up the chimney there was usually a hole where people would have kept salt to keep it dry and curiosity made her put it in her hand. She caught something and pulled it out. It was a piece of ragged cloth. When she opened it up there was a tin locket, very poor looking, but inside was a drawing, just a sketch of a wee baby. And it said, Katie, 1847. This is what the great-great-granny had wanted back into the house for. She took it to her father. They knew exactly what it was. They'd heard the story of the concealment, of getting back in, bring up something that was lost. They wrapped it carefully. They put it in the grave with the great-great-granny. And nobody ever heard the crying baby again.